Assalamu alaikum my dear students today again we are going to do our favorite play we are going to discuss our favorite play Macbeth act 5 scene 3 4 and 5 my dear students I have chosen three scenes today because these three scenes are quite short and they are easy to understand they are not so long uh, I think these three scenes would contain three or three and a half pages of your book so you can see from your books and the learning objective of this uh, of this lesson is to be able to understand the downfall of the tragic hero tragic hero means a hero that is going to have a tragedy a hero that is going to have a bad or sad ending so Macbeth is going to have a sad ending and what is that sad ending sad ending this is what we are going to uh, this is what we are going to discuss today actually we are going to discuss the background and the causes of the downfall of this tragic hero in these three scenes so here we go in next here on your screen you can see the short summary of act 5 and scene 3 and this is the same way we did the short summaries of act 5 scene 1 and then the act 5 scene 2 so again uh, uh, in front in, on your screen you can see act 5 scene 3 short summary so let's read it Macbeth strides into the hall of Dunsinane with the doctor and his attendants boasting proudly that he has nothing to fear from English army or from Malcolm. Macbeth is having uh, you may say Macbeth is having three prophecies in his mind the prophecies of apparitions of three apparition in, in his mind the first apparition was Macbeth uh, Macbeth needs to be beware of Macduff I am telling the apparition in my own words this, this these are not the exact words of apparition so Macbeth needs to be beware of Macduff the second apparition says Macbeth cannot be murdered until a man who is not womanly born can come and kill him this was the second apparition and third apparition was that Macbeth cannot be murdered or Macbeth cannot be harmed until the Benham Woods may come to Dunsinane uh, may come to his palace so these three the uh, out of these three prophecies two prophecies were over for Macbeth Macbeth was thinking that two prophecies are uh, quite impossible like all the persons in the world are womanly born and no one can and even the Birnam woods means the forest that was uh, some kilometers away from Dunsinane and uh, Dunsinane sorry that Birnam wood or that forest cannot walk to come to um, uh, to the palace of Macbeth so these two things were quite impossible as Macbeth was thinking this so he said at this time that he uh, by keeping in mind the uh, uh, by keeping in mind the prophecies of witches Macbeth says that he has nothing to fear from the English army or from Malcolm or even from Macduff because Macduff and Malcolm they both are leading the army to attack Scotland so he gets a whole heap of bad news in this scene he came he, he gets a bad news the first bad news was that he learns from doctor that his wife is not well this was the first bad news for him like like his wife is not well this was said by doctor and even doctor says that uh, he, she has no maybe she may not be saved and, and she may not be cured for the from the disease and this was a second news sorry that, that there is nothing to, uh, the doctor can do to help her this was the second bad news that was heard by Macbeth in this scene the second news was plus he hears that 10,000 English troops and a whole lot of Scottish ones have gathered together to take him down now here here he comes to know that the English army has reached the Birnam Woods English army has reached near the borders of Dunsinane and English army and many lords of Scotland the, the lords that used to be with Macbeth earlier but now they have joined English army but now they have joined Malcolm or Macduff to uh, to take him down to take Macbeth down so this is this was a second uh, bad news that was heard by Macbeth at that time after some time he prepares to fight he decides that it, it, he decides that he wants he wants to die fighting he does not want to die uh, by sitting in a room or by sitting in a palace he wants to die why, when while he is fighting so this was a short summary of act 5 scene 3 talking about the important quotations or important <coughs> sorry talking about the important quotes <coughs> or important points or important dialogues of this scene so there are this scene very as i told you this scene is very short so there are uh, almost three uh, famous dialogues here and i suggest to you all that please underline these dialogues 
so that you may uh, please underline these dialogues in your books so that you may use them as evidences in your in your questions or when you are writing the answers of some questions so macbeth here says satan i am sick at heart when i behold satan i say this push will cheer me ever or deceive me or deceive me me now satan is a lord of macbeth and uh, we came to know satan in the previous scenes as well so satan is a lord of macbeth who is with macbeth right now in this scene macbeth says to satan like satan i am sick at heart macbeth is now realizing that he is not he is not brave anymore he has sick at heart he is not brave he is covered you can say at this time he is saying this when i behold satan i say like he says that i cannot i cannot even walk anymore i cannot fight here but still this push will cheer me ever this push means this attack the attack from the english army the attack from malcolm macduff so he says that this push this attack will cheer me ever like this attack is going to cheer me how like if he wins the war if he wins the war or if he murders the other person and if the prophecy of which is are fulfilled it means he is going to have a lifetime cheer he is going to have a lifetime joy and he is going to enjoy his throne he is going to enjoy his kingdom he is going to enjoy his seat or deceive me now like if he if he is defeated if he is defeated by malcolm and macduff so he would be deceit deceited from from the throne he would be no more on the throne and he would be punished by Uh, by taking him out of the kingdom so this this is written in li- at lines number 19 20 and 21 the second dialogue by the same macbeth is my way of life is fallen onto the sear the yellow leaf here macbeth says <coughs> macbeth says this uh, macbeth says this to uh, to satan again he says that my way of life is fallen onto the sear the yellow leaf it means his life is going to end, going to have an end it means he is going to have his life is going to has a downfall the sear the yellow leaf yellow yellow leaf uh, basically is this is the this is the symbol of autumn and autumn is the symbol of death autumn is the symbol of lifelessness so it means his life or he is going to be lifeless he is going to have a downfall here next doctor says the the second uh, important sorry the third important quote of this scene is uh, said by doctor doctor says she is troubled with thick coming fancies that keep her from her rest this is uh, this this thing is said by doctor to macbeth the so doctor says to macbeth she is troubled she means lady macbeth because doctor is taking care, doctor is taking care of lady macbeth and doctor is giving doctor is uh, giving the cure to uh, lady macbeth so she uh, doctor uh, makes macbeth updated about the current situation of lady macbeth by saying that she is troubled with thick coming fancies like he she is having some fancies fancies means some imagination like she you can say like, like she is having the habit of self talk she starts talking to herself so so in this way you can say that she is troubled with thick coming fancies she is having some imaginations and because of those ima- imagination she is troubled that keep her from her rest like she cannot rest anymore she is restless and she is not in her proper uh, you can say conscious she is out of conscious she is restless right now so this is written at lines 39 and 40 if you talk about act 5 scene 4 short summary so let's read the short summary of scene 4 first everyone has arrived at at benham woods everyone means english army malcolm macduff and some of the scottish lords who are now uh, who have uh, who have now become against macbeth and they have started supporting malcolm and macduff so uh, everyone has arrived at benham woods and they are ready to march on dunsinane they are going to attack dunsinane they are going to attack macbeth's castle malcolm talks with the english lord siward malcolm as the leader of the army 
uh, he talks to the English Lord. English Lord means uh, a, a, a commander of the English army. Seward. Seward was a commander of English army. Uh, English army. Basically, English army was led by Malcolm. So, he talks to English Lord Seward. Seward is a character here. And his officers about Macbeth's plan to defend the fortified castle. Fortified castle means like his castle is fully secured. Macbeth has planned everything to defend his castle. Macbeth has planned to, to fight back with the approaching English army. So this plan, this plan was, the plan of Macbeth was discussed by Malcolm and Seward and many other officers of English army. Malcolm fulfills the witch's vision by commanding that each soldier carry a carry a bow from the trees of Denham Wood. Malcolm here Mal Malcolm gives an idea. What was this idea that every soldier is going to have a bow from the tree of Denham Woods? Bow means a branch. So every soldier, everyone will get a branch of tree, and then that they will keep that branch in front of, in front of their face, and then they will start moving towards Dunsinane. So that they will be hidden as they approach Dunsinane. So they want themselves to be hidden and they want their number, the quantity of the army, the number of the soldiers to be hidden as well. So in this way, this was, uh, you can say, uh, this was a technique that was used by Malcolm. And technique was they are supposed to get a branch of tree and put that branch in front of their face in order to keep themselves hidden. So when they start moving towards when they start moving towards Dunsinane, when they start moving towards Macbeth's castle, so you can say, which is second prophecy or second apparition is going to be fulfilled. As because they said, Dinam words will come towards the palace of Macbeth. So here, in this way, by keeping the branches of trees in front of them, when the soldiers move, in this way, Dinam words, Dinam words will move and uh, and the, they will march towards Dunsinane and ultimately they will attack Macbeth. Here there are some important quotations of this scene, Act 5, Scene 4. Malcolm says, Cousins, I hope the days are near at hand, that chambers will be safe. This is what Malcolm says to the, all the lords of English army, all the commanders of English army. So cousins, cousins means friends or the or the commanders or the lords. Like they all belong to a royal family. That's why Malcolm is using, using the word cousin because Malcolm is also, uh, Malcolm also belongs to a royal family and the other people of English army, the officers, the lords or the commanders of English army also belong to a royal family of England. So that's why Malcolm is, uh, Malcolm is using the word cousins. Cousins, officers or lords, I hope the days are near. The days are mere. It means that uh, they are going to have a time. Uh, what? What time? At hand, that chambers will be safe. The chambers will be safe. Chambers means the rooms will be safe. This chamber is pointing out the time when Duncan was murdered in a chamber. So Malcolm is keeping in mind the murder of his father, and he says that. Chambers will be safe, like no one will be murdered by when someone is sleeping inside the chambers. And at that time, no one will be murdered. And that days are coming that every chamber will be safe and no one will be murdered anymore. This is written line number one, two. The second dialogue by Macbeth is let every soldier hew him down a bow and beard before him. Means every soldier should have a bow, a, a, a branch of tree in front of their face and beard before him. Beard before him means uh, they have to keep it before him. Before him means they have, they have to keep the branch of tree in front of them. So this was again said by Malcolm to the, uh, to the, uh, to the entire English army. Seward says we learn no other but the confident tyrant. Seward is... As I told in previous slides, that Seward is uh, an English lord uh, in English army. So he says, he says this to Malcolm. He says that we learn no other. Like we know, we we know uh, no other person. We uh, we have 
no other person in our mind except one person who is that one person the confident tyrant who is the confident tyrant macbeth macbeth is tyrant and sivert as commander of the army say that says that he has only macbeth in his mind it means they have to attack macbeth only and they are going to uh, do it soon this is written at line number 8 and 9 If you talk about Act Five, Scene Five, short summary, here you can see back at Dunsany Inn, Macbeth is getting a little overconfident. <coughs> Macbeth is becoming over overconfident. Why? Because he thinks that he has the prophecies of of which is in his minds. So, according to those prophecies, Macbeth cannot be harmed because of the things I told earlier. So, because of those things, because of those prophecies, Macbeth is overconfident. Dunsany Inn is well fortified. well fortified means well protected and well and, and the army and the scottish army <coughs> and the army of malcolm is protecting the protecting that palace so you can say dunsany is is well fortified a woman's cry is heard a woman's cry is heard who is that woman and why he is crying satan appears to tell macbeth that the queen is dead queen means lady macbeth so in this scene in act 5 scene 5 in the last act of this play in scene 5 we come to know that lady macbeth is finally dead and some people says that he has committed a suicide because he because she uh, sorry she has committed a suicide because she does not know what she was doing and she was out of her senses she was restless and uh, some in this scene when you will when you will when you read the exact wording or the original text of this scene you will come to know that according to some persons lady macbeth has committed suicide so after listening to this news macbeth shocked macbeth speaks numbly about the passage of time macbeth gets shocked but still he wants to have a courage in in his mind because he is supposed to fight fight with the army that was approaching a messenger enters with astonishing news this was the again this was the first news the death of queen was the first sad and shocking news of of macbeth and this was again an astonishing news astonishing means shocking news of macbeth surprising news of macbeth that <coughs> sorry that the trees of venom woods are advancing towards dunsinane trees of venom woods are advancing means they are moving towards dunsinane so again this is how because uh, we, we know that trees of venom woods cannot move so who was moving the soldiers with the branches of trees in their hands so this was observed by observed by a messenger and then he told this to macbeth enraged and terrified macbeth got enraged and terrified he got scared that what is happening how a tree how the trees of venom woods can move towards dunsinane and this was uh, after listening to this news and after listening to the death of lady macbeth he got terrified and and enraged macbeth recalls the prophecy that that said he could not he could not die till venom woods moved to dunsinane he recalls this prophecy that i just told Resignedly, he resignedly he declares that he is tired of the sun and that at least he will die fighting. He said that he is tired of the sun. He is tired of the sun. Now here, sun means whenever sun comes, whenever sun rises every day, sun is the sign of life. Sun is the sign of new birth. Sun is the sign of hope. Sun is the sign of happiness. Sun is the symbol of hope, happiness. life and rebirth so he says that he is tired of the sun it means he is tired of all the happinesses all the hopes and all the uh, all the lives he is tired of what he is doing and now he at least he will die fighting with english army here you can see the important quotes of this this scene macbeth says dinas familiar to my slaughterous thoughts cannot once start me written on lines number 14 and 15 of of act 5 scene 5 macbeth says dynas dynas means horror like she she he is of the view that he is having the horror but that horror is familiar to his slaughterous thought slaughterous means he he is not coward he is brave he can slaughter anyone he can kill anyone as he used to kill in the wars 
so he can slaughter any everyone he is having the slaughterous thoughts and she he, sorry he is saying that that horror is darkness is familiar to his slaughterous thoughts and that cannot once start me like the horror of the english army the horror of the brenna woods approaching towards dunsinane this horror cannot start me means this horror cannot uh, cannot push him down and he will start, he will he will have to fight then he says life's but a walking shadow a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then he is heard no more he is talking about a life he says life is but a walking shadow a walking shadow a life is just like a walking shadow life is not full of happinesses life is not forever like is life is walking shadow as shadow disappears when there is light so he says that life is also going to be disappeared life is also going to be over but he is uh, describing the life by saying that a poor player a poor player means an actor that struts and frets his hour struts means walks or performs as the actor performs and frets his hour frets means pass passes his hour upon the stage if some if some actor is performing on the stage if some actor is coming performing and then passing Uh, and then passing and uh, and is performing on the stage and after some time he goes back he passes and go back to the backstage life is just like this life is a stage someone comes on the stage for some time and then he goes back to the eternal life and then is heard no more is then is heard no more mean like if an actor comes here after some time when he is died he is heard no more no one can hear him and no one can even talk about him after his death again he talks about the life by saying that it is a tale told by an idiot it means life this is one of the very famous dialogue of macbeth in this play there this dialogue is you can say this like dialogue is universally famous dialogue and i have i have seen many people using these dialogues it is a tale told by an idiot life is a tale told by an idiot life is a story that is told by that is narrated by an idiot full of sound and fury there is there, there are so many attractions in the life there are so many sounds and fears in the in the life but those sounds those attractions those happinesses those hopes those positivities those optimist optimistic thoughts they signifying nothing like they have nothing their significance is nothing their importance is nothing life is but a story that is told by an idiot so the this was all about uh, all about short summaries and important quotations of act 5 scene 3 4 and 5 now you are supposed to do a homework and this is very uh, very easy homework and i'll give you some other questions uh, in in next lessons so first have a look on this question this is very easy to the diary entry of macbeth do the diary entry of macbeth before going for battle with macduff about whom which is say beware of macduff you you have you are supposed to write a diary you are supposed to consider yourself that you are macbeth and you are writing a diary you are going to fight with macduff you are going to have a battle with macduff macduff and malcolm you may say but i have used the word macduff specifically here why because macduff is the person about whom which is say beware of macduff this was the first apparition as if you remember so you have to consider yourself macbeth and you have you have to uh, write down a diary in which you have to you have to write the current situation of your mind you have to write the current situation of lady macbeth you have to current situation you have to write the current situation of entire entire palace and entire city or you, even entire scotland and you are supposed to write Uh, the situation and the condition of english army why they are uh, why they are approaching dunsinane and, and why they are going to attack macbeth this is what you are going to write as being macbeth in your diary and your diary should have almost you can say it should consist of one page and one page would be more than enough i guess so guys that's it from my side today thank you so much once again so i hope you have understood each and every point even if you have not got anything you can ask 
you can uh, you can uh, teachers are av available for you in your class timings so if you have any question you can ask in the comment box and even if you have if you have understood each and everything so you, even then you have to comment just to show your presence that you are enjoying and you are understanding online classes and, and understanding the lectures given by the teacher so guys that's it from my side inshallah we will be with you with a new topic with a new enthusiasm with, with a new passion next time so thank you so much